great. everybody, Robert Jurdy here and welcome to the Saturday Morning Cartoons edition of All Things Nerdy. Hope you're having a great Saturday. And today we are talking about the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Now there's a lot to unpack with this. We won't be able to get everything. But uh, the majority of the stuff I want to get to, the basics. Uh, the cartoon premiered 1983 on CBS, ran to 1985. It was 27 episodes in three seasons based on the TSR board game role playing game Dungeons and Dragons. Very controversial. We'll talk about that a little bit. Also, too, this was released in the midst of a sword and sandal sorcery revival. Uh, Conan was 82. Conan the Destroyer was 84. Dragon Slayer, Beastmaster. Like, all these movies are coming out around this time. So there's a renewed interest in sword and sorcery stuff. So this kind of picks up on that trend, throws some kids in there, and here we go. So the way it starts off, we get our introduction, which... Introduces us to our main character. Six kids hop on the Dungeons and Dragons ride, which is like a track ride. You go down kind of like it's a small world after all, and there's like animatronic dragons and stuff, and they're, you know, this is dumb or this is fun or whatever. But then they get caught up in a portal and they're transported through the ride into the actual realm of Dungeons and Dragons. And right away they meet the dungeon master, he assigns them weapons and roles. And then they meet Venger, who is the embodiment of evil in this world, who's got such a great style. He's got like only one horn. So you don't know if he's missing the other horn, if he ever had it. Like, what's the backstory behind that horn? And he's got bat wings. And then you meet Tiamat, the five-headed dragon. Each dragon head is different. And it shoots out like the blue one shoots out like blue lightning. And the red one shoots out like red lava. Like the designs here are very cool. And then that's it. You start rolling. So, it, I mean, it goes fast. This is, a, and I'm not going to hit all of the points in this episode because it is dense. Like, there is so much stuff going on uh, in this particular episode, but we'll get to it. So, the beginning of the episode, we see our crew as they're kind of wandering around this land they've been transported to. They're climbing a mountain to get a better viewpoint of where they are. And in doing so, they inadvertently release Tiamat, the five-headed dragon, from his cave. And so using teamwork and working together, they are able to, to put him back in his cage. But during this battle, we see the characters' personalities coming out. Like, of course, the barbarian is smashing things with his club. And the ranger is, like, shouting orders, Cyclops style. And everybody's kind of working together. Uh, we also meet the uh, cavalier, who is the, the whiner of the group. I don't know about a whiner. More of, like, the complainer. And the dungeon master appears after they, you know, take out Tiamat and they put him back in his cave. The dungeon master appears and it's like, great job, everybody. You worked together, used your skills. Very nice. And the cavalier's like, get us out of here. What are you doing? Get us out of here. We need to go home. Like, he's, he's like a rich, he's like, he's portrayed as like a rich kid. And he's like, you know, my daddy's beach house and I should be there by now. And I need to get my, my limousine and all this stuff. And uh, everybody just kind of disregards him, whatever. But the, the dungeon master's like, so you guys did a great job. Now I need you to go to the town of Helix. Uh, they're having their annual, or their, yeah, their annual celebration that celebrates them getting dragons out of their city. And so I need you to go there. Bye. And he vanishes and the cavalier is just furious. Like, where are you going? Ah, where are you going? <laughs> but before, the, before he leaves, the dungeon master's like, but on your way there, you will encounter Venger, the, the embodiment of evil in this land. You'll know him by his white hair. Goodbye. And he vanishes. And so the crew is like, well, let's get walking. We got to go to this town. So they make their way to the town. And on the way, they see Merlin's. Well, they see Merlin's floating castle. And they ascend this ladder to get in there. And they meet Merlin. And at first, they're like, oh, look, he's got white hair. 
And Merlin's like, oh, my hair. Yes. Well, he's like, I am Merlin, the greatest magician in the world, but I can't cure my premature balding. And so he takes his hat off and it's like a white haired wig and he's like bald underneath it, but he's got like a gray beard and stuff. And they're like, oh, sorry, dude. I didn't mean to call out your baldness. And it looks good, but sorry. And he's like, mm -hmm, whatever, puts his wig back on. But the whole time, visual clues, he's stroking a white rabbit. Okay. So they go and they're talking to Merlin about getting home and Merlin in the process told, tells them about this town of Helix and the dragons that invaded a thousand years ago and how they've had peace ever since. And while they're talking, he's like, but I can't really help you guys. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I can't help, I can't send you back. And the Cavalier's like, this is dumb, I'm out. And he splits. And everybody's like, well, do we stay, do we go? And as they're talking, Boom! Tiamat the dragon reappears and he's like, I got out of that cage! I'm after you guys now. And so there's this great fight in the, in, um, there's this great fight in Merlin's house. And so the dragon's chasing him around and Merlin's using his magic, but the, the rest of the team is kind of handling it on their own. And the ranger, there's a really cool, cool scene where he's like, I'll hold him off. And he's shooting his, his arrows and then the acrobat's like, all right, over here. So you're starting to see the the personalities come out. Not only that, but like, in a weird way, like the, what is it, the command structure of everything? Like the, the ranger's definitely in charge, although he doesn't act like it. He's not a bossy guy. They do a really good job of these characterizations. I know it's just the first episode, but there is so much going on. Um, but at any rate, so ranger's like, I'll hold him off. You guys get out of here. And so then the acrobat, who's like the second in charge, is like, all right, guys, let's go this way. Let's go this way. And so they kind of get into the house. Meanwhile, the ranger escapes, you know, holds them off, escapes, follows them. And they devise a plan to where they actually get the dragon into this dungeon. And it's a cool scene because they're like, they're, at the, they're in the last room. They're stuck. And they notice a big door on the floor of this room. And the ranger's like, what's that door for? And Merlin's like, well, that's a dungeon. And so he's like, I got an idea. They open the door. He's like, magician, make a carpet. So you can't tell there's a hole here. And so the magician, even though he's generally, a, a, I don't want to say screw up, but his stuff doesn't always come to plan. Like earlier, they were hungry and he made, he's like, make burgers. And a cow appeared, you know? So he's not always perfect. So, but anyway, he makes this carpet and they cover up the hole where the dungeon is. And then the acrobat goes out and she's the bait. And she's like, hey, dragon, I'm over here. Come get me, you know, come get me, man. You can't, you know, whatever. Taunting him. I can't taunt very well, obviously. So taunting him and the dragon comes and she uses her staff to like pole vault over the rug and the dragon falls in the hole. Boom, close it up, lock him in the dungeon. So they, you know, again, teamwork, ingenuity, they figure it out. And at the end of this whole encounter, they're like, look, well, you know, if you can't help us, we got to split. Dungeon Master said to go to Helix, so we'll probably head there. And Merlin's like, no, I understand. He's like, but you know, Magician, Presto is his name, the Magician, to the kid. Uh, you're great. You've got some magic skills, and I'm wondering if you'll be my mentee or protege, but you have to live here forever, for the rest of your life, to learn my magic. And he's like, what? Everybody's like, what? And so the next scene, you see him waiting outside and they're like, he's not going to stay here. We're our team. He's not going to stay here forever. And then Merlin and the kid come out and they're like, all right, bye everybody. I'm staying here forever. See you later. And everybody is shocked, like blown away. They don't understand what's happening. So they leave. They're like, okay, is this, are you sure this is what you want? And he's like, yeah, this is what I want. He's not very convinced, but he's like, yes, this is what I want. So the team leaves. They head to Helix. Meanwhile, the apprentice stays. Uh, Presto stays and he's kind of hanging out in this place and he's stirring a, stirring a cauldron and the magician Merlin is like, hey, you know, later on in the afternoon, we're going to have to get rid of that dragon you guys locked in my dungeon. And he walks off and Presto is like, well, how do we do that? And Merlin says, well, in this book here is the answer to every question you've ever asked, you ever will ask. All the answers are here. All right, see you later. And then he walks off, and so Presto's like, what? That book. And so he goes over there, and he fiddles around, and he finds a spell to send everybody home. As he goes, and he starts to pull all this stuff, you know, Eye of Newt and Wormwort or all that, you know, stuff like this to create uh, the spell. 
And he does. He creates a spell and dragons start to appear and start pouring out of the cauldron he was using. And he's freaking out. And so he runs to Merlin and he's like, Merlin, 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 I did something bad. I used your book to try to free my friends, but it didn't work. And now dragons are pouring out of the cauldron. And Merlin's like, you did what? Oh, you tried to send your friends home and the spell backfired? And he's like, yes, yes, I'm sorry, I need your help. And Merlin's like, good. That's what I meant for you to do. He's like, what? He's like, yes. I knew that Merlin's spell could only be broken by the use of good magic. So I switched the spells. I knew you would be, you know, once I told you about the book, I knew you would be looking in there and trying to recreate the spell. So I switched them. So the thing you did is you actually reversed Merlin's spell, keeping the dragons away from the town of Helix. So now the dragons are free, town's destroyed, and I transform. <laughs> And it's Vengar, and you're like, oh, no. And he takes his magic hat, and he's like, Psh, thank you. Now, once I collect all your other friends' magic artifacts, I'll have enough power to rule the world. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it. And the kid's like, what have I done? Meanwhile, there's this really cool scene in the town of Helix, and the ranger is talking to the mayor. This is like a troll town, or hobbit town. And he's talking to the mayor, and he's like, yeah, you know, this is this celebration is amazing. And you see, um, you see the barbarian, he's playing baseball. And there's, like everybody's having a good time at this big celebration. The town's really excited. And so there's this great scene where the two girls are getting a, a, their fortune told, right? And the fortune teller is looking in the crystal ball and she's like, yes, you will be very wealthy. I see lots of wealth in your future. I see dragons. Dragons! Dragons! And everybody starts freaking. It's actually a creepy moment when it happened in the cartoon because I wasn't expecting it. But the fear in her eyes seeing in the crystal ball the dragons. And they start, they run out of the tent. And the ranger's talking to the mayor of the town and he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm glad we ended up here. He's like, you know, I don't know why we're here, but it was cool meeting you and meeting Merlin, who we met before we got here. And the mayor is like, you didn't meet Merlin. And the ranger's like, yeah, we were in this floating castle. He hung out. He showed us about, he told us about the town and your history. And he kind of led us here. So it was really cool. And the mayor's like, Merlin's been dead for over a thousand years. And the ranger's like, oh, crap. And then you hear the screaming, dragons, dragons, as people are running towards him. Then all of a sudden, boom, fire, <laughs> explosions start happening as the dragons attack. It's very tense, like very tense moment. Surprisingly, for a kid's cartoon. And like the dragons are just decimating this town and the heroes are like, oh my God, the guy, the guy isn't Merlin. And they're like, but the white hair. And they're like, the rabbit, hair, rabbit, hair, H-A-R-E, not H-A-I-R, which is cool, <laughs> which is kind of cool for, I think an intelligent way to introduce like, what is it, homonyms, homonyms and homophones into sort of the kid's world like, a hair is not only hair, but it also hair. It spells different, but means you know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. So they're like, oh my god, let's go back to the let's go back to the floating castle. So they get on the horses and they go to the castle and they climb up the ladder and they find the they find Presto the magician. And he's like, guys, I messed up in a big way. And, and it's a really cool moment where they again they kind of show you how cool these characters are. The ranger just kind of puts his hand on his shoulder and he's like, We'll take care of it. Like we got it, dude. Don't worry. You know what I mean? But just these like these moments that show the the personalities of these characters. So they devise a plan. So the ranger and the magician go to Merlin's magic room to try to reverse the spell. Meanwhile, the other four uh, take Vengar and they split him up and they try to occupy him, right? And so while this is going on. They, you know, they're doing the magic and then there's this fight. And so what they decide to do, in a, well, there's actually two cool moments here. One, they need to shut off all the lights in this hallway, in this corridor. And so the acrobat is like, I'll do it. And she gets her staff and she like pops it out and she throws it. And it like Captain America style ricochets off the walls. But in doing so, like puts out a light, puts out a light, puts out a light. And it's a really cool moment. But in this moment, you see the ranger, and they, they do this on purpose because they focus on him. But he's looking at her like, you're so awesome. To the, to the acrobat, it's such a cool moment. Like, 
as the lights are going out around him, he's like, oh. I'm just like totally in love with her, which is a really cool, I don't know if, I only watched the first episode, but I don't know if they ever flesh that out in, in future episodes or what have you. But so, but what they do is they split up and four of them kind of occupy Vengar while the two of them, the ranger and the magician, try to recast the spell to get Merlin's protection back up. And what they do is they release Tiamat the dragon, who was the whole time in Merlin's dungeon. And so Tiamat goes after Vengar and these two are fighting. And he's like, all right, forget it, I'm out. And he splits. He's like, you won this time. And he splits. I think he even says, you meddling kids or something like that. And he splits. And then the dragon is going nuts. And then he splits. He follows him too. So they, they kind of save the day. The wizard, meanwhile, the kid, is able to redo Merlin's spell. And it like makes the dragons vanish again. So he gets his mojo back because you know everybody's making fun of him for how lousy of a, how lousy of a wizard he is. So he gets his mojo back, we get the big final fight, town is saved, everybody's happy, and at the very end, they're like, wow, you know, we did it, and it's actually kind of a cool scene that reminds me of uh, the Goonies, when, you know, in the Goonies, like, they're on the shore, they've just finished their adventure, and they look out, and they see the ship, the pirate ship, like, floating off into sea, into the horizon, it's the same thing, like, they get out of the you know, the dragon and Vengar leave, they get out of Merlin's floating castle, and when they're on the ground, they look up and they see it starting to float away. Like it's, you know, it's like, man, get in there. But the dungeon master comes back and he's like, hey, you guys did a great job. Magician, I have your hat for you. Don't lose this. And so the hat is retrieved. Everyone has their mystical artifacts back. Dragons are safely banished. Vengar is gone. And the cavalier is like, well, great. Well, we did all this, but we're still not home yet. So why don't you get us home or whatever? And Dungeon Master splits and he's again furious, like, what is happening? But they're like, all right, well, our journey's over. Let's get on our horses and go. And, and the wizard was like, yeah, come on, Cavalier, hop on the back of my horse. And the Cavalier was like, I'm not riding on the back of your horse. I need my own horse, thank you. That's gross. And, and the ranger's like, well, hey, can you give him something to ride? And he's like, well, I think I can to the wizard. And what does he do? He goes into his hat and he pulls out that cow from earlier. And the cavalier is like, what? I'm not going to ride a cow. And the cow licks his face. And that's kind of how it ends. It was a fun, and this is a very brief, it's probably like at 45 minutes already. This is a very brief, quick dive into this episode. Because there was a, like, you should see my notes. There was so much stuff involved. So many cool character moments. I mean, we don't even talk about the thief very much, the um, well, I mean, thief, barbarian, everybody gets little moments to shine to show their personality. It's very ranger, acrobat, ranger, acrobat, cavalier heavy, but still very fun episode. Now, Dungeons and Dragons, as we talked about earlier, role-playing game, board game, also controversial because a lot of people at this time thought that this was like satanic. So there was like a lot of controversy about like, you know, the devilish nature of Dungeons and Dragons and how it can lead you into like these weird sort of cults. There was even that movie with Tom Hanks that's like, I don't know what it's called, Fun House and Fire Arrows or something. I think that's the wrong name for it. But all of it talks about like this, the, the media, I don't want to say, just the media attention was on this. Uh, also too, as we talked about, it deals with the revival of the sword and sorcery world, which I mean, I loved as a kid. Like Conan the Barbarian is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Like top five movies easily. Like if you need to get motivated, watch Conan the Barbarian, the first one. And Beastmaster is a lot of fun and all those things. And so of course, and as a kid, like you're a plucky kid and you're, I wonder how when Indiana Jones came out part two, of course, you know, I wonder when Indiana Jones Part 2 came out because, you know, Short Round is in that. So you've got kids who were like the protagonist, kind of. I mean, he was more of a sidekick, but you know what I mean? Like kids on this adventure. Dungeons and Dragons. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Now, uh, I, like I said, I, haven't, I only saw the first episode. I'd be curious to see more. If you were a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, let me know. Now, I know nowadays Dungeons and Dragons has huge cultural phenomenon. You know, there's a lot of D&D groups, podcasts, videos. Joe Manganiello is doing like everybody. Celebrities are doing a lot of D&D stuff right now. So it's cool to see it's making a big sort of nerd revival. 
And uh, yeah, the show, I don't know. I think maybe it's uh, prime for a nice, maybe updated reboot or... So the whole thing with this series, to, to wrap this up, is that they never... So in the 27 episodes, they never get back home. And there was a written but unproduced 28th episode that chronicles them going home. And so actually, just a couple of years ago, most of the cast reunited to record... It's just the audio. They know, of course, no cartoons, but just record the audio of this big finale episode, kind of wrapping up, you know, what is it, 30 something years later, 35 years later, something like that. And uh, so the story goes that apparently we learned that Vangar is the son of the dungeon master. And at the end, Vangar is redeemed, he turns good. Uh, the kids who are now a little more grown, I guess, have the choice. They're either able to return back to their homes or stay in this dungeon and dragon world and sort of keep living these adventures. And I think it leaves it open-ended. You don't necessarily know. I haven't heard it. You don't necessarily know which way they go, but it gives a little bit of closure to the series. So all in all, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, like I said, I'd like to dig into more episodes. And if you get a chance, definitely check it out. Uh, there were some fun characters, some fun moments, and yeah, sword and sorcery, man, I'm into it. But as always, thank you for watching this Saturday Morning Cartoons Edition. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday, great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you next week with more All Things Nerdy Entertainment Edition. So have a good rest of your day, and as always, stay nerdy.